I wouldn't tell them who we are, hey, but I'm folks, not sure welcome, I know. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tuesday afternoon edition of the Wild Bob and Ronnie Show. We're coming to you from our studios in La Follette, Tennessee, U.S. of A. To all you troops and all you peoples overseas, we want to welcome you and let you know that we're holding down the, the uh, uh, home front uh, while you're over there where you're at uh, trying to escape the Ebola uh, uh, epidemic. We also realize that there's probably nobody watching since there are only right. viewers sitting right. here with us in the audience. But I think I think half of my relatives watch, you know, and uh, then they tell the other you know, half. All my siblings watch. <laughs> they tell the other half what's going on, you know. <laughs> You ain't got to, and I don't want to negotiate too much, but I just now have to think about when I was thinking about you dropping your pistol out of them britches one time. You ain't got a pistol for sale, do you? I sure don't. Okay. Who's you're looking for? Me. For yourself? Yeah. There's somebody I want to shoot, and I you want to... You want it unregistered? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't care. I, I, don't, I, I really don't have a thing right now that I would want to get I'd like that. to have something you could stick in your purse if you had a purse and lived in Miami. <laughs> I don't have, uh, well, a price one major, he had a, what one it was. What's the name of that company that moved to Tennessee? It's not Ruger, is it? They didn't move to Tennessee, did they? Ruger, Ruger. Did they move to Tennessee or miss Tennessee? Oh, one of them moved to uh, Memphis, or not Memphis, uh, uh, outside of Nashville. He, okay. had, he had a little old, uh, Ruger 357, a little small one. He had one before for it. 357 small? Yeah. That'd tear your hand off, wouldn't it? Not 357, 380. Okay. 380. Yeah, 380. Mm -hmm. And they want 400 for it. I'm told them that's just a little rich for my blood. You can yeah. buy a new one for that, can't you? I, I would say there's somewhere just right around there, yeah. You can buy a Kale Tech, and they're good pistols. Well, now, wait a minute. This wasn't a Ruger. I think the name of it. I've had several of them. I uh, take them in think it wasn't a Ruger. Wasn't as expensive as a Ruger, but it still went full for it. Kale Tech? Uh, no, no. It's uh, almost like a partner's along that. You know what a partner's is? No. Uh, I'll think of the name of it in just a little bit. And I've had a bunch of them. Uh, uh, but now you take uh, as far as guns are concerned i'm going to say it again and i'll probably, probably say it every show that we have from now on that in tennessee we have no second amendment rights if you pay for the privilege you can have uh, the privilege of carrying a uh, bearing arms but in tennessee you cannot without a special permit carry any gun that has bullets in it. So if you don't have bullets in it, then you're not armed. And uh, in order to go armed in Tennessee, you have to buy a carry permit, which takes away the right to bear arms. It makes it a privilege to bear arms, and you have to pay for that privilege. So in Tennessee, you have no Second Amendment rights. You, it says uh, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, I don't know of any greater infringement you can make on bearing arms other than making take the bullets out. There's a Caltech, uh, uh, Caltech 380 for 265. Right there. Caltech, I've got a Caltech. 32 and that's have a you? good gun. I don't know what the name of that is, but say again, in Tennessee you have no Second Amendment right. If you don't have the right to bear arms, that means to carry a loaded gun, then you don't have any Second Amendment right. You no, know, a rock is just as good as a gun with no bullets in it. No. Uh, 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 didn't say anything about a gun that said armed. It, 
and it's not an arm. Well, I did. I, did. I said a pistol with no bullets in it ain't no better than a rock. No, no, I'd rather have a rock or a stick than a pistol with no yeah, bullets Yeah, you don't have to pick it up and you get done with it. Yeah, yeah, I would much rather have uh, a rock or a stick uh, than have a gun that had no bullets in it. And, uh, you know, because they're dangerous. Most people get killed with unarmed. Uh, with unarmed bullets, uh, unarmed, un, unloaded, unloaded. Gun, unloaded guns. They get killed with unloaded guns. And so uh, I make sure all of them I have are loaded. Well, that's good. The, uh, <clears throat> let's say that you have got one of those uh, privilege permits that you buy to carry a weapon. Now, does that include a a knife or a claw hammer or a ball bat or when it says a weapon did you, wh what are you allowed to carry did you know that you can carry a knife in the state of tennessee switchblade of any length now you want to is that changed in july you don't have to buy a permit no you can carry How about that see can, now you can you go can on. carry a sword well you know why you can do that don't you that's because the uh, Constitution does not guarantee yep. you the right to carry that knife. They'll let you do it. What about a ball bat? I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, they tell me that, that if you're going to use a ball bat and hit somebody, you need to have a ball and a glove close to it uh, so you can say you wouldn't carry it around just as a weapon. Well, that's, that's what I'm getting back to, though. If you're entitled to carry a weapon, would a ball bat not be considered a weapon? It's just. Uh, well, a claw hammer or a... Oh, he doesn't. He does not say weapon. You know, David done pretty good with a rock. Yeah, and yeah. A pretty, yeah uh, he done real good. Right. Uh, it, it's amazing how such something so small, just like a, a little quarter of an ounce of lead play, placed strategically, will change a person's whole attitude, their priorities and everything. Right, but now, Constance Jesus said you have the right to bear arms. But you're talking about shooting material. No, it, if it says bare arms, now, of course, when they wrote the tra the Constitution, I'm sure they weren't thinking about ball bats. And they're slapjacks or blackjacks or nunchucks Peter or whatever. To, Peter wants to arm bears. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm... I think the founding fathers had fully intended to be talking about guns. I... I agree. Explosive shells. Uh, explosive shells? Oh, shells that, that'll uh, propel. Percussion. That'll yeah. propel by explosive. Yeah. Explosive shells, not Expl explosive bullets. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I think there's nothing illegal about carrying an explosive bullet. I think uh, technically you could uh, park a Sherman tank in your yard uh, with a... Uh, Eighty caliber machine gun. I it. think before they say uh, tactical nuclear weapon, though, they ought to at least do a background <laughs> check. Well, I think yeah. so too. You know, uh, uh, before you're allowed any uh, nuclear weapons, you need a thorough, uh, unbiased investigation of your right. mental state <laughs> and yeah. whatnot. Right. But yeah, as I say, we we have no Second Amendment rights in in uh, Tennessee. It has become a privilege. How'd you like being New York or Illinois? Well, I don't know whether you have the police scrutiny in New York, or Illinois that you have here. Uh, for instance, I pulled out from Jacksboro this Who's morning uh, <laughs> there at Walmart. Yeah. And I heard this motorcycle up beside me. I looked over there was a highway patrolman looking at my window to see if I had my seatbelt on. Now, you wave we, at him? If we've got, if we're able to hire people to ride up and down the road on a motorcycle and look in your window and see if you got a seatbelt on, then we have too many highway patrols. I agree with you. Gentlemen, you're missing the whole point of what that's about. <clears throat> the, if you look deep enough, you can find out that I believe this, this push that was done today, what is there, about 10 of them? What? Troopers and whatever out here today. Had the a pile of them, they okay, say. the reason for that I see for that, everything turns around money. Every citation that they write here goes through the county court down here. And that oh. means they get court cost off of it. Sure. State will get their share. All right, you send in 10 or whatever we want to 
from other counties, other districts, and they ain't got nobody here that can get mad at them because they're just going by the book. They can't get personally grudge against them. They'll send them here. They don't. You follow what I'm saying? I but the county, exactly. the county, this may be how they're going to uh, enforce or raise our revenues by hooking we're up by. They, they yeah. are encouraged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are, that would be. Well, if you look into the money side of it, that's what I think. I think there's money involved, and the county will make a fair amount off of it. Uh, most of these people will not, that go to court, they're not going to contest this thing. All they're going to do is go down and pay their court costs and their fine and go on. And that's that's what well, I see it as. Well, one thing I would like to do here in Campbell County is start an organization that when a person has written a frivolous citation, whether it be a motor vehicle citation or whether it be something regarding something else, that they are encouraged to ask for a jury trial and their additional expense is uh, uh, supplemented by some organization here that pushes for that sort of thing. So if, if You'd you bankrupt them. Uh, well, they know what you'll do. No, they, you would. Uh, they, you personally. They they will quit issuing these frivolous citations where you're going to pay a hundred and some dollars court costs and a twenty-five dollar fine. Now you take the other morning. Uh, I was going down uh, Jacksboro Pike at uh, five minutes past five. I was going to go flea market. No, five minutes past six. Excuse me. And uh, I had a headlight to burn out. It was burning when I left, you know, that we worked on. It was burning when I left. And But when I got down there, he pulled me over not having a headlight, which I can understand that. But not during those hours of the morning when people are going to work. I think he ought to go fishing and get off the highway while people are going to work in the morning because people who work are a premium now. Now listen, you don't want him out here during the day because the people who pull over don't work and they can't pay the fine. People who don't work, well sure that's exactly right. They, see, it's no profit in arresting criminals. That's right. The only profit is in arresting people of citizens, law-abiding citizens. And that's the way it is in these states that have these real strict gun laws. Nobody pays any attention uh, to them but the good people. It's the good people that get disarmed and it's the criminals that wind up with the, uh, with the guns. So uh, you're exactly right. It is about the money. Uh, but I never thought that law enforcement ought to be uh, correlated uh, with being profitable. <laughs> Who you think going to pay the bill? Who's going to pay the bill? The ones down there that are incarcerated are not going to pay the bill. Well, they shouldn't uh, have all the bills they got. Now, you take uh, our new uh, judge, Amanda Salmon, and I wish her well. Uh, well, she just stepped into, what, a $126,000 a year job? Isn't that what it pays? I think so. I believe so. that's what Joe was making, $127,000 a year. And, uh, of course, Joe was turning everybody loose. Uh, and uh, of course they were getting it back on probation fees so Joe was probably making his salary on probation fees that's uh, <clears throat> I don't think that I don't know how this works it'd be interesting to know how everybody gets paid whether it's just and I think judges would probably be paid by a flat uh, salary whatever and plus benefits of course yeah but what I'm saying uh, he's putting enough back into the system to take care mm-hmm. of it Salary. That's the, the reason these cops run around on these motorcycles. Hmm? That's the reason these cops run around on these motorcycles. Pay their way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If uh, <clears throat> the law enforcement, I'm sure, doesn't make an, doesn't bring in enough revenue to pay for the. It's like the county or the city, either one. The patrolman out there and the citations he writes will not come nowhere near to pay the expense of law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement, the largest percentage of it, I'm sure, is paid out of the general fund. And if I'm not mistaken, I heard it was stated somewhere that the county 
law enforcement or the county, what we would we'd refer to as the sheriff's department, is uh, has a maintenance of effort. I believe I heard that it mentioned why? the other day a maintenance of effort. Really? I believe it has. Uh, I couldn't verify that, but I heard somebody state it the other day. And uh, see, what they take in, of course, would supplement the. If they have a maintenance effort, let me put it this way. I would say maintenance effort pays for all the fixed cost. And then whatever they take in other than that may go to other kinds of uh, programs or something along those lines. Uh, the, uh, I don't, let's, let me put it this way. Whatever they uh, confiscate, like in a drug raid, if they get money in vehicles or whatever else, when they sell it, my understanding is that that goes back to the sheriff's uh, uh, account. It does. Is what I'm thinking. It does. So if they have That's maintenance of effort. I think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, think since, I think since they are funded by the county through the general fund, that all of their uh, things that they take away from people, a lot of times illegally, whether it be cash or whatever, uh, and I don't think they ought to be able to do that, but I think it ought to go back into the general fund rather than going to the sheriff's department as such. Okay, what you would lose right there is you'd lose the motivation for them to, what what motivation there is to it, you'd lose that, that aspect of it. Well, the only motivation a, a police officer should have is that that's his job description, is to enforce the law. Protect and serve is what they used serve. to do. Well, the, uh, if you, you want to get philosophical about it and go a little deeper, anyone that takes from you, uh, whether it's law enforcement or whether you, anything, let me tell you, put it this way. Anytime you have to pay a fee that goes either directly or indirectly to the government, and that would be considered government, and be it uh, your income tax, sales tax, you name it, anything that you pay, that the only thing where you're reserve, receiving back for it is through the government. Now, like in a fine, I'm getting off little bit of subject. Let me get it down to a fine. When you're fined X much of money, what they're actually doing is taking so much of your time, which is your life. Your life is measured in time. And if they write you a citation, just like the court down here, whenever they take their 100 or $200, whatever it is, for uh, court cost, they're taking away so many errors, every how many errors it takes of your life to earn that money, they have deducted that from you. That's because true. you've got to invest that time in order to pay that. So really it boils down to anything like that and and we trade off uh, our time, our lives or whatever for all sorts of things. We trade it off whenever we uh, get a job or if we in any anything we go to do, whether <clears throat> we spend it out on the lake or wherever we're doing, we're spending our life, our time. And what law enforcement does or any other way that they uh, take from you, that's what they're taking. They're taking time from you. <clears throat> the bottom line is they're taking so much of your time. Well, I think that's true. That's, I think it's very true. But like Ronnie mentioned a while ago, uh, if you don't, if they don't issue citations and arrest warrants for people who work and can pay their bills, then they're not going to be doing anything but incarcerating people. Are they doing like these... Uh, drug dealers and drug users that they arrest and then they give them a $50 a month probation fee, which means they've got to go out there and steal 50 more dollars worth each month. Or and sell so much more drugs. Yeah, uh, yeah or yeah, something. Or, or sell that many more drugs in order to pay their probation fee. The, <clears throat> the, the people who decide to travel on that side of the law, they make a decision somewhere back there that they're going to acquire their livelihood by either stealing, doing things that what we call illegal, which is nothing more than words written on a paper. But once they decide, once they pick that path, uh, be it uh, stealing, drug dealing, or whatever else, uh, it can be brought on by peer pressure or anything else. Once they make that decision, in my opinion, it's as hard for them to change 
as it is for the druggies to quit the drugs. Uh, if you can, a drug dealer, the way I see it, makes a decision that rather than to go out here and work like I'm going, what I don't want to say like an idiot like me, he goes out here, a drug dealer. He don't have no set hours. He doesn't have to uh, have a business license. He doesn't have to pay any kind of uh, workman's comp. OSHA ain't coming to looking at him. Uh, every dime that he makes or profit he makes off his drug deal goes in his pocket. He don't have to keep the paperwork on it and whatever. So what that right there is a great incentive to be a drug dealer. And you might even get to sample the goods every now and then. It's, a, uh, it's an incentive to run a gambling joint like, oh. Cliff, like Cliff Jennings you did. Name it. Because all that's pure profit. It's, uh, it's an incentive to be a, a bootlegger, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. this area up here has a long history of bootlegging uh, and moonshining. And it is permeate, permeated down where they look on anything uh, such as drug dealing and gambling and uh, that sort of thing, they look on it uh, as, you know, it's okay. Family business. Huh? Family it's business. Family business. Speaking like, of family business, you know anything about that battle care place? Well, yeah, I do. That is a family business. It's owned and operated by John Bond and his family, uh, staff the office, as, as well as operate the uh, uh, ambulances at some times. Uh, it's privately owned, have over almost 40 years experience in the ambulance business. You can reach them at 562-9370 or you can call uh, 911 and request vital care. It's the only ambulance service in this area when you call them. It does not cost the taxpayers any money. Also, they have a mobile uh, ventilator on one of the ambulances, and they're the only ones in this valley that I know of, uh, other than if you get into Knoxville, that has a mobile ventilator that they can transport you from one facility to the other uh, if you have to have uh, be put on a ventilator. I have used them when I come down with food poisoning uh, several years ago, and I can tell you that tender, love, and care is their motto. So when you need ambulance service, or if you need to be transported from one uh, medical facility to another, you call Vital Care at 562-9370. Now that's one major health tip. The other major health tip is don't eat Bob's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> unless you want to see how your digestive you you your try Vital Care. <laughs> unless you want to test your digestive system. Right. Uh, uh, Gentlemen, I heard <clears throat> the other day, and I've made mention of this, that the president has come up a way with a means by which to do with the coyote, coyotes that are transporting the illegals well, across the border. I'm not talking about them catching <clears throat> my chickens. No, them, them coyotes, what you got to do is get a few extra chickens for them. But, and I thought this was a joke when I first heard it, but I hear that he is trying to get a bill introduced into the House of Representatives to, uh, let me back up and say this, they've declared, to my understanding, all of the residents of Guatemala and maybe Honduras as being uh, refugees. Now, what if you we heard need this is thing, a job retraining program for them coyotes. Well, yeah, okay, but anyhow, uh, his proposal is that in order to put these coyotes out of business and keep these people from coming up here and dying in our deserts and everything, is he sends airlines down there and to pick these people up. Anybody that wants to come and have a doctor there to check their temperature to be sure that they're not ailing or whatever else. Not, that's wrong word. Maybe sick, because I believe they are alien, but anyhow. And transport them up here, and he says this will put the coyotes out of business. And it'll save so well, many we people. Ride them on the train. Back well, the train's too dangerous. There oh. are people getting killed on the train, and they're dying in the desert. So by doing this, see, we eliminate three or four different problems. Uh, I think mm. I, I, that sounds like a great idea to me. Warren Buffett mm. owned that airplane. That's Probably, but I, I found I go back to another thing I heard one time. Guys having trouble with the foxes killing his chickens, 
and he come out with a great idea as how to keep the foxes from killing his chickens. Yeah, yeah, the chicken he killed all of his chickens. So thus he stopped the fox from getting in his chickens. And this sounds kind of like, to a certain extent, the same theory we're talking about here. And well, he went further to state that he was checking in to see if this could be done by executive order rather than sent through Congress. Well, you know, one of the ways that the government gets rid of a lot of its problems is by making it legal. Oh, absolutely. And eventually... You make something legal, then you don't have to worry about just stamping out uh, uh, something if it's become legal. Take uh, marijuana is a prime example. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, marijuana being a problem anymore. You just make it legal. Well, that may be the only solution to the drug problem. If, if there was a solution to the drug problem, this war that we declared on drugs back, uh, I believe it was El Lyndon Johnson, it was it or Nixon, that somewhere way Nixon back there. Nixon and Reagan. Right, okay. Nixon. If, if we've been fighting this war for that long and we haven't won this war, it seems to me like uh, it's kind of like other wars we get into that we can't win. Uh, like you say, the only thing I see is to legalize it or just say that we could declare that we won and and, and dissolve all well, of our drug make, enforcement. You make a, a strategic advance to the rear. Yeah, that's what they call attack to the rear. Yeah, yeah attack to the rear. Uh, that was a phrase. That slogan came up during retreat. Korea. No. Uh, they they came up with that because they said it made sense due to the fact that our troops were all surrounded by Koreans. That was up there so in any the, way you went, up there in the re uh, reservoir. Yeah, well, it was in the reservoir. Yeah. But that was where they was at, and it was well, it was bad there. But anyhow, there was some places in there that there was only one road, one way out, and it was right on the side of the mountain. And whoever controlled the high ground. Uh, Control that. That's correct. You had one vehicle wide roads, right. and if they could catch a convoy and disable the front vehicle and the back vehicle, right. they had these people, our soldiers, right. in a bad, yeah. bad situation. Yeah. And anyhow, I've got a book, and I'm when I get done reading it, I'm going to hand it off, I'm sure, and it's called Korea: The Untold Story, and this book has the uh, communiques and whatever between the White House and MacArthur and whatever else and according to this book on November the 2nd or not November December the 2nd we had already the White House and MacArthur and whatever had already decided determined that we were beat in Korea and all they tried to do was get out as fast as, as best way they could without getting trapped because we had uh, we had two or three, well, most of our army was so far north that, and of course the Chinese were involved, right. that if they could get behind us, we was in trouble. So we had to try to get out as strategically as well, we see, could. I have, a, I have a brother that spent three weeks in a small bunker over there in that section when they were cut off. Yeah, they... Uh, he, was, he spent yeah. three weeks in there, in fact. And he, I'd say that was in December. so bad over there, the only way you could get a hot meal was to choke a dog and make him throw up. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say that that things like things didn't happen. Let me put it that way. Uh, I've heard people I've heard people say that they wouldn't do this or they wouldn't do that. If they're not being in that situation, I don't see how they can say what they would do. Because I heard a fellow tell me that you would not believe what you'll do for a drink of water. Oh, yeah. So, we have to get him to tell you about the honey buckets over there. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Anyhow, yeah, gentlemen, if you got some subjects we can discuss, anyhow, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. After this election, I start doing some looking, and I'm thinking about seeing, I read all this stuff about conservatism and whatever, and I've done it all my life, uh, except for uh, the rules for radicals. I read that just for a reference. But I think I'm going to start studying as to how to become a left-wing liberal and start going around well, long. you got to do is lose your mind. Well, uh, getting certain businesses, and that's not hard to do. Right. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they think you're at, you've done lost it when you go into the businesses. You don't have to be crazy to start a business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I was just thinking when uh, 
that uh, highway patrolman pulled up beside me on a motorcycle and looked in to see if I had a seat belt about how it was back when I was a young man. You did the right thing not because somebody was looking over your shoulder and you were being threatened with a citation or something being taken to court for doing this and doing that. You did the right thing because it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now we have gotten away from that. Uh, people nowadays, you know, if they can't catch me, I'll go ahead and do it. If I can get away with it, I'll go ahead and do it. Well, that wasn't the way it was when I grew up. Uh, you did what was right because that was the right thing to do. Now they have put so many policemen into our lives and so many uh, uh, rules, regulations, rules and, laws. and regulations to have to govern uh, they're going to make sure you go to the bathroom uh, that you don't grunt too loud. Uh, there's too many things that pressure you all the time. So what you do, you sound proof your bathroom, then you just grunt as loud as you want to to get away with it. Uh, yeah. the <laughs> uh, we can use a scenario that you never, it, it kind of, I don't know where I come up with this at, but anyhow, Children learn to do a certain thing around two year old or something like that. And it seems like they remember how to do it the rest of their life. And it's a simple thing. Uh, We're talking about potty training. That's again? correct. They learn it and they don't seem to forget it. And I don't understand why. Until they get real old. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> then they got, well, it just depends. Well, yeah, it depends. That's a good word for it. But anyway. We uh, well, like what you're talking about when we've got to the point that we're not allowed to make a mistake. And back then, if you made a mistake, chances are you paid for it instantly. If you, uh, like if you drove without your seatbelt and you had a wreck, <coughs> uh, you got hurt, you was paying instantly well, for I, a mistake. Well, I come long before there were even seatbelts, well, much less harnesses. He came right, before right, he had but, seats. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, we uh, did that. My daddy bought the first automobile in the community that had bumpers on it. Right. And well, I can remember... Well, drive before it got bumpers, and then it went to run them things. I, I remember when the, a heater in a vehicle was a option. Yeah. I can remember that. Of course... Yeah. Uh, well, I remember when you was going up a hill, you had to take your foot off the gas you had to get the gas and the windshield. You're real happy. But, <laughs> I've not uh, seen that many a time. Anyhow, locally here, we'll see, and I don't know how many people we get locally that listen to this thing, but the County Powers Act is something that could be rescinded <clears throat> uh, to give us a few rights. <clears throat> but the first thing that I think should be done in the county commission is they should bring up <coughs> a vote to forego the building codes that they've got my understanding is I haven't been able to research it yet but they've got 90 days yeah and in, in order to opt out of the building codes True. and I like Ronnie's idea about building codes and I think that was a real good one if you go to build a house, I don't care what you're building out here. If you're paying for it, <coughs> yeah, I can see the electricity. I can see the electric being uh, inspected and the sewer. <coughs> Other than that, if it leaks, if it don't, if it's well, not insulated or whatever, you ought to be able to do it. They ought to be able to inspect the water up to your house so that okay. you don't, don't drain back on it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. Well, on your standard... Uh, uh, well, I, I see what you're talking about. About that's a check valve. Yeah. And all backflow. The backflow. Mm -hmm. uh, check valve is supposed to do the same thing. Well, backflow is a little go different. Back to the meter. Well, no, no, she don't want backflow in case she had holes in that bucket over there. If I've got it turned on and got hog slop in the bucket and the water goes off. Because yeah, the line the breaks falls. down here, mm -hmm. it'll drain my slop into the main water line and. That's a check yeah, valve. Yeah, that's true. That's probably true. Yeah, well, it, yeah, yeah. to keep it from backflowing. Keep, yeah, a check valve in the system. And there's different types of check valve, or backflows. Uh, there's commercial type that will... Uh, it's well, a, it's a check valve yeah, to prevent backflows. To b what prevent it is. backflows, what it is. Uh, I didn't know it would flow backwards but let, 30 let, meters. There's well, a... Yeah. 
I didn't think it would. Well, there may be something in the meters now that won't. But right. anyhow. Because when I, when I had plumbing license in North Carolina, when you put water in from the meter and you come up under the house, the first thing you had to put was a shutoff valve. Mm -hmm. And then you somewhere either uh, before, a way to make a difference where you put it right after the uh, 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 meter or whether you put it right after the, uh, right before the shutoff valve or after it, uh, you put a uh, pressure reducing valve. Okay. Now, we never had to put a. Uh, you do now. A, a check plug. valve. You have to have three. You have to have you have to have the check valve, the cutoff, and the pressure reducer. But it may well be. I mean, it just makes sense that they've got that same same backup system there on their meter so that it won't backflow. Right. Mm -hmm. That should have been well, designed. The, you yeah. can't produce solar water and get any credit by putting it back through the meter. Mm, well, I know that, you, but no, you wait a minute. Get TVA Maybe if you go to hydrogen power in your home, you could sell water back to the water company. I hadn't thought of it. In yeah. order to put water back through, if there's pressure on the main, you'd have to exceed their pressure, of course. Uh, but now, what happens when, when... No, no, I know it'll backflow because your line drains whenever they uh, are used to anyway. If they say the line, well, I've had it, the line break down here. Mm -hmm. And when this big line broke, they'd cut it off, but it'd keep draining down there. They got fixed, and it'd pull the water out of my lines. Now, it may have a check valve in it now, but it didn't used to have. It would, if you had a check valve, it would only pull it to the check valve, providing your check valve was working. We're talking about my functional. check valve. Right, as yeah, long as it's but functional. But if I don't have a check valve, which I've been known not to have. Okay. Back in the old days, it would pull it through the meter. I don't know whether to check yep. valve on this water or not. No, they're supposed to be. Huh? Supposed to be. Anyhow, fellas, I think that this would be one thing the county commission could do is to take care of this building codes thing and let the people make their own mistake. The, the people who really pushed this building codes were the bankers and the lending institutions. The real estate agents. The real estate, well, that's what I'm talking about. Bankers and, and real the estate. carpenters that wanted to get that high dollar work that they ain't getting now. Oh, well, that's a good point, too. Uh, but well, now you take even uh, Lowe's Hardware and uh, uh, this other place down here on the left. Potter. Uh, Potter and all Handles. those. They push for it because you're supposed to use grade mark lumber. You're not supposed to use any lumber that's uh, reused. All right, there's a ton of things if you go back to that code that you're not allowed to do. And they, uh, the guy down there, they, they come up here and they tell us all this bunch of bull about the houses falling and killing the kids. And I challenged them to tell me one house that it fell. And nobody knows of the first house that has collapsed. I just like to name that kid that got killed so I could send flowers. Well, th this is what I'm saying is, <clears throat> let's say if I go out here to buy a piece of equipment, I know there is equipment out here that will cost far more than a house will cost, or the average house, one piece of equipment. Why should the county not provide a, an equipment inspector to inspect that to be sure that I'm not going to get burnt? And then when well, you go to buy... <clears throat> You buy some pretty expensive equipment. Would you, if they had a county inspector, if he certified a piece of equipment, would you take it for face value and go ahead and buy it? Absolutely not. I would not. I, tr I have to. I know. I have I know to trust. Wouldn't. I have to trust my own, whatever. And if I was going to need a piece of equipment inspected, I'd hire an inspector. Right. If I well, or I talk to somebody the point else. That's on the house is you can hire them. But here's another thing: if you hire an inspector to inspect your house and he signs off on it and you get in it and it caves in on you, you can sue him and That's he's correct. bonded. You, That's can't correct. Sue the county. you can't sue the county. Nope. The guy's not bonded, whoever it is. And I don't even know who it is anymore. But that's beside the point. What I'm trying to say is the government has got us to the point that we can't make a mistake. Let me tell you, here's, here's the thing. Let's go back and compare it to a lottery ticket. Let's say you go out and buy a lottery ticket and it's not a winner. Should they? Should we get reimbursed for it? No, it's a tax okay. on stupidity. You yeah, that's what it is. But anyhow, what I'm saying is, what they got, they got them a cash cow here that they can milk. They can milk that cow for whatever it's worth. They can. What sets the the cost of the building permit is whatever people can bear. 
Uh, that goes to everything. Whatever the market will buy is what they will charge. Well, I always want to take care of you and tell you what you can do. Have you ever listened to George Cord? I'm not listening. I do. Long time. I'm not. I'm but not I sure. heard him say one time. I actually have heard him say it two or three times. He was a lobbyist for a while, and he was, for some reason, he was fighting the seatbelt law. And one of his arguments was that you can, if you're a woman, you can go have an abortion, and it's against federal law from to interfere with your control of your own body. Right. In other words, they can't say a word about what you do with your body. So you get in your car, and if you ain't got your seatbelt on, they can give you a ticket because you're mm -hmm. not taking care of your body. Mm -hmm. That don't make a lot of sense. It doesn't. It makes sense when it comes to revenue. Money's worth yeah. the whole thing. The whole thing turns around money and power and whatever you want to call it. Well, I'm going to talk about another kind of power, and it just take me a minute. But there's power down there at Digger Wilson's up there in Sawmill Holler, right up there in the middle of the road. And it ain't a bit about money. It's about bringing you good propane, propane to heat with, propane to cook with. Uh, you can even run your refrigerators off of, I got a propane and, uh, get, uh, and a electric a refrigerator sitting up here in my warehouse. Did it uh, work? Huh? Did it the work? electric park does. 5625444 four, 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 if you want to talk to Digger. Right, that's 5444. 5444, 5622. All your propane yeah. needs. Yeah, and go on down there right in Sawmill Holler. Uh, it, Now's a good time to get all your propane uh, uh, heaters for this winter checked over. Your Mr. Propane, your wall heaters, your, your uh, propane stoves. Uh, Digger will, he'll fix them up. Your cook stove, your propane cook stove, you know. So, uh, you know how uh, if you uh, hook uh, propane up to a uh, natural gas stove, how you can tell it's not a... Uh, yeah. It's not a propane stove. The, the, first of all, propane is just a little thicker than, than natural gas. It's a little harder. You, yeah, your orphix, orphix, it'll come up there, buddy. When you turn that flame up on a natural gas stove and it's hooked to propane, you, you never seen such a flame. <laughs> you, you can sure burn your beans in a hurry that way. <laughs> yeah, there is a difference. But that is the only difference in most of your stoves is the orifice in it. Yeah, at the well, tip. that's what makes a flame mm -hmm. come up is because mm -hmm. it... The natural gas stove's got a bigger orifice than the propane. Yeah, than stove. the propane is. That's correct. Uh huh. <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> but anyhow, I I don't have much confidence. Even though we elected new people and whatever, <clears throat> we elected new people before, and yeah, I got that a got us a really I, good well. Deal. I, I I'm I guess I would you say I know the background of some of the ones that's been elected. And if they hold true to their past uh, we're performance, trouble. we're in trouble. <laughs> That's all there is to it. And the uh, if they jack our taxes up, like a lot of people are predicting, they have a there's going to be a lot more properties that come up for court sale because yeah. there's going to be a lot of people who cannot afford to pay it. And well, they'll take their property. Well, let me mention something to you. I don't think any of them that are elected, and I can probably tell you who the, who they are from about every uh, precinct or close thereof, I don't think they have any idea about the concerns that we're sitting here talking about. I don't well, think they ever think about them. I don't think a lot of times they're not even aware of them. You know, that's not uh, their uh, part. The uh, building codes... Very few of them, if we never see, if nobody ever said anything about it, they would never say anything about it. County Powers Act, if nobody says anything to them about uh, the County Powers Act, they would never say anything about it. That's right. They won't. The air, government agencies want all the power they can get. And in this County Powers Act, they had the stage set, and it may even be set better now, that they can enact anything in that thing with a two-thirds vote. Or a three four quarter, maybe it's three fourths vote. Three fourths. Okay, they can enact anything in that thing, and I haven't read it lately. I once or twice is about enough for me, and that's two times more than uh, the county commission said they had read it. They said they hadn't read it, and after they read it, they said they didn't understand it, but yet they passed it. So, 
anywhere, that's where that's at. Uh, I got a feeling, and they can prove me wrong, that there's not going to be anything changed down there to amount to anything other than that name up there in front of that seat. You know, where it says, uh, Mr. Baird. Be interesting to know what would pay for them things, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be interesting. Do you reckon they give them to them whenever they leave? I don't know, but I bet you we pay a whole lot more than it would take to just write it on a piece of paper and stick it yeah. up out there. Yeah, that's something else. Why is it that they made a, uh, there was a comment made about the, and this is going way back in history or whatever, about how they had to have a big table at the uh, county school board yeah. building down there so they can make real good decisions. You what had to have a big kitchen table. kitchen up to the library. Yeah. I'll I tell you what. And the outhouse, or the the bathroom that had no vent in it. Yeah. I'll tell you. They inspected that, didn't they? Well, that that's where I'm coming from. There's different rules for different folks. You take the individual out here, <clears throat> they put a more strenuous set of rules on him than they do the building of a commercial building. Uh, the commercial is to be inspected by, and that's another state, thing. State. Yeah. Uh, just like how in the world did such a thing get by in a commercial building to have a bathroom that had no vent pipe in it? How, in, how does such a thing get by? I mean, without being caught. Closed bins. You know, when we put a wheel on a truck, we make sure that all the lugs are on the thing. They're torqued and whatever else. You know, I'll tell you what I'll bet you. There's a law out there right now that says that you're not supposed to make a hydraulic hose without you went to school and been certified to put the end on a hydraulic hose. I've done it for years and years and years. And I've had one maybe to blow off, but we, whenever something happens, you learn from it. But anyhow, you're, uh, there's a certification that you have to be certified to run a forklift. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. how many people run a forklift? That, see, what I'm saying is, there's a, tons of people that run a forklift, do perfectly good. If they know about the center of gravity and a few laws of rules of, gra of gravity and inertia or whatever, right. but yet you've got to go to school and teach some, pay somebody to tell you something that, what well, was it, Newton knew whenever an apple fell out of a tree? Boy, that was certified to run a forklift of that Myrtle desk in the high point and the first day on the job he backed it off a four foot a four foot to mm. a platform. Oh wow. I that's mean, a hard hurt, lick. Hurt him bad. Too. That's a hard lick, but he four foot's a hard lick. Yeah. I don't know how See, he lived. I don't uh, either. He I, he was I lucky. Wonder he wonder he did live. You He's know lucky. that old boy back that bobcat in the lake out there yeah, about he, ten years he ago. He didn't do that but once. No, that's the only chance one he time. <laughs> The uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, anyhow, fellas, y'all got others. I tell you what, the discussion come up the other night about uh, the state of Tennessee, and I believe the entire state. I know Campbell County has went with it, to where all students and Knoxville's the one that started on this here back a year or so ago. All students in most of the Knoxville schools had their lunches paid for, and that includes breakfast free of charge they they had a percentage free of charge to them yeah. free of charge to them yeah uh, but Campbell County has uh, signed on to the same thing they call it a grant or whatever they want to call it but anyhow I made the comment that that's fine and dandy of course most of the people who are eligible for food stand or for free lunches are also eligible for the card let me tell you it's almost impossible to get a kid through school without them signing them up for free meals. Well, oh yeah, yeah, it is. I they look at you like you're funny if you want to pay for their lunch. I used to try, yeah, I used to try to keep mine off of that free meal deal, and they made fun of them. The kids yeah. made fun of them because they're the only ones paying for their meals. And then I finally just give up and just let them do whatever they wanted to do. They'd send paperwork home, and I'd just throw it away. Well, the last year that my two were both in school, up here at the high school, one of them paid full price and the other got it free, and they're from the same family, the same income, and I hadn't filled out paperwork on either one of them. Now, mm -hmm. what they needed, they needed so many to get their quota, to get their FDA support, mm -hmm. 
And whenever they got it filled up, it just happened to work out that they started at the seniors and worked down or started, I guess they started the freshmen and worked up because Ike was two years behind. He got his free, but by the time they got up to the seniors, they didn't need him more the time he had to pay full price. <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'm going to sum this up in my usual very blunt fashion. The federal government has made a whore out of the state of Tennessee, and the state of Tennessee has made a whore out of the counties. And it's all about money is all it is. Gentlemen, uh, they, they state that this is going to make the children have higher grades, which it might, I don't know. But if we're going to battle hunger, what about that we do this for everybody that don't have lunch money? I'm talking about <clears throat> the people out here under the bridges. Why don't we have a place to where that they can let them even go to the schools or go somewhere else and pick up free meals? I Just like you, ought, Bob. I, I think we ought to all be able to eat down the schoolhouse. Free, absolutely. Or uh, all meals be free at all restaurants or anywhere you want to yeah. go. Let them be free and let the government have a grant and everybody pay the taxes, you know. But if you want to go in and eat, you, you're furnished anything you want to eat. Now, what would be wrong with that? If it works in the you school, know what why would it work in the school? Said, don't those, you? Those I know exactly who, what she those, said. Those but who, those who don't work are going to get the same benefit as those who do. Well, well, I believe that it said somewhere in the Bible, if you didn't work, you wasn't supposed to eat. Well, now you're you're mixing Bible with state, see, or with uh, free money. See, you're not supposed I'm to do that. I'm also mentioning Bible whenever we're mixing that with state, and we can't do that no more. Well, if we're going to talk Bible, there's also this other thing. We're changing the meaning of the words. But what would be the difference if everybody in the United States, and I'm going to say everybody, I'm not talking about citizens or anybody, if you can get your foot on soil in the United States, why not have everybody eat free? You go into the restaurant, you just, whatever, and the restaurant sends the bill. The United States of America, all they got to do is run the printing press, say another half a day to print the money, and it's took care of. What's wrong with that? Now this is what I'm trying to learn in this year left, left wing liberal thinking. Now where is the money going to come from? It to comes from these people. Uh, well, it comes from the government. They print it. Where is it? No. Well, that's not money. No, well, yeah, it is. I yeah, I tell you what. I can take my money out right here, right, Bob, and show you a dollar, or somebody went over here and stole a dollar, or the government just sent them to them, and you can't tell one from the other. If the government sends you a hundred dollars or for doing nothing, and you go out there and work and earn a hundred dollars. I'll lay them side to side, and you can't tell one from the other. Yeah, but where, did the gov where does the government actually get its wealth from? Well, they don't have wealth. The They're seventeen faith, trillion dollars. Uh, the full faith and credit. Now, there you go. It takes some out up here at the bank, but anyhow, why not do that? All we do is rent to print, run the printing presses another half a day, uh, and that's it. Well, and I'm people, raising minimum wage a hundred dollars too. Well. Yeah, yeah, I, that'd be fine. I no well, problem you, with it. That sounds like about like the philosophy that oh. Tim, Timothy Geithner uh, had in the Obama administration. That's over here on page one thirty-seven of the liberal book. Worked out good. For yeah, worked out fine too. Yeah, fellers, we're in deep stink, and I'm kind of. You need to read, but you need to watch that thorium reactor. Uh, thing. That'll get your mind. Let me tell you something. Financial let me, stuff. Let me tell you what. Oak Ridge has got a national laboratory, and there are several of them all over this country, national laboratories. they got computers that will make decisions in numbers that we can't even imagine. They can solve any problem there is down there. All they got to do is just figure out a way to ask the computer, and the computer will tell them. <coughs> and it's just like on solar panels. I figure <coughs> these national labs that can create a solar panel about the size of your thumb That'll produce enough electricity to to fix thousands, hundreds of thousands of houses for free. Sounds like this John Galt. You believe it? Go for it. You believe it? No. Now I won't say the Golden Gate Bridge. I got it located up here at the other end of town. Well, you know, why did we fill the rooftop full of them if they could do that? The reason they're not filled full of them because it's not financially feasible. <clears throat> Let me put it this way. If it was financially feasible, these national labs would know about it and they'd have it designed. They might have it for all we know, but they're not putting it out here to the general public. And it's kind of like cell phones. Well, now, wait a minute. 
If it, just, just think about this. Just think, just stop and think. If solar energy was foolproof and going to make money, why would people like Warren Buffett not have all of Iowa covered up with them and just start raking in the money? You wouldn't have to fool all this other stuff. You it's foolish. As would soon it? as the government pays him to do it, homes. he'll do it. Yeah, as soon as the government will guarantee him to yeah, pay it, Yeah, but if they'll you didn't it. have to subsidize it, if it was actually that kind of a money maker, it's the same difference in... in, in Steel cans, Bob. Is there any market for steel cans? Would you get out here and walk up and down the road and pick them up for what you get out of them? In fact, uh, they won't take uh, used, uh, say, vegetable cans and things that they dump out here. It's such low-grade metal. Okay, but they will get out and walk up and down the road and get run over and everything else and dig in dumpsters and stand upside down in them and get in aluminum. Because it's worth something. Worth about a cent and a half a piece. Well, people will do that because it's actually worth fooling with. The market sets the price. It has value. There's no value to solar panels right now unless somebody subsidized them. Now, if they just decided to raise the price of steel cans up with aluminum and subsidize it, they'd get every one of them out of them dumps. Right. My daddy told me, do you remember back in the 60s whenever uh, Lady Bird Johnson... Was it cleaning up these junkyards? Yeah, that beautification yeah, program. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful, right. Beautification yeah. in America. Yeah. Uh, my daddy told me, he said, all these junk cars that they're getting out, he said if they'd just raise the price of scrap iron, they'd clean every ditch out. Right. Well, the market finally did that. That's and right. you can't find a car in a ditch anymore. Yeah, Goober would pull one out of yeah. a creek, every he'd door or whatever. He'd catch one the road where it got around gas, and he'd take it and mash it. Yeah. Uh, that that's true. Whenever the city up of La Follette, they had this big kick they was on, Bob Fannin, of course, of course, uh, I don't have to give you my opinion of him. He wanted to ma make a resolution, a whole bunch of stuff, because there's a bus parked up there somewhere behind his Taj Mahal or something. Mm -hmm. And we said, somebody kindly brought it to him. He, he don't stoop low enough to understand the, the economics of this thing. But we told them what that thing was worth, you know, in about two days, somebody done went and bought it and it's gone. And they didn't even have to pass a city resolution, but they probably passed it anyhow right. to give them more power. Let me ask you fellas a question. What, what other freedom that we have, if we have, or, and I don't know whether we got any left in this county, if we've got a right or freedom left here, <clears throat> which one do you think the county commission will vote to take next? Is there anything left that they can take from us? Right, probably zoning. Yeah, zoning, yeah. They uh, zone all every square inch of it. That's that's the next thing I'd say. Is there anything else they can take? They've done Tucker right to speak. I figure it's probably been run up and looked two or three times, the right to congregate without a permit. Now, you see, like you said about the Second Amendment, you have to have a permit in order f to exercise your Second Amendment. What happens if you have to have a permit to exercise your First Amendment? Well, you... You know, if you're going to have a, a parade or something that's over so large, you already got to have a permit. That's right. But I'm I'm getting back to the other side of it. Don't We're you think? Quick, don't don't you? We're going to sign off here in a minute. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I won't dig into this. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if they, why not pass an uh, ordinance that says you have to have a permit to congregate? And I'm talking about everywhere. If you get more than three people together, you have to have a permit. Well, women, that's the Bible that says if you have three or more people, you have a congregation, you have well, a church. But look at the money they could pull off of it. And in my opinion, they could pass it, let it lay there for maybe four or five well, years or three years, and then do enforce it. Do you realize it. that Cliff Jennings may be listening to this program? Cliff Jennings. You know, well, if you would said the other name, I'd have to go around to my mouth out. TV. It's right. coming. Folks, we're going to have to sign off here. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, we'll see you uh, Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock on WLAF 1450 and 100.9, as well as UG TV and, and WLAF.com. blessing is you can't see us on the radio, but you can still see us right here. Ta-ta for now. Bye. See ya.
think. <laughs>